Hi and uh, welcome to this video about spirits having sex with human beings. Quite a weird one. However, there seems to be a cluster of these stories coming out in the uh, tabloid press in the UK. Predictably enough, given where they're coming from, take it with a pinch of salt. But the interesting thing that I think that's been described here is what we call in the, in the West an incubus relationship with a human being uh, or in more um, Arabic or more pointedly Islamic uh, culture we'd call a jinn relationship. So this story centers around a woman called uh, Amethyst Realm from Bristol and she's a spiritual guidance counselor and she claims to have sexual relation <laughs> sexual encounters with 20 different ghostly lovers. She says ghost sex is better than sex with real men and uh, these are more satisfied. Miss Realm has recently met a special spirit and the two are pretty serious and they're investigating whether it's not for her uh, possible for her to have a ghost baby. The bit here for me, because it's that's interesting, is, is the whole spirit is just being defined as ghosts. When I would say it's probably a lot wider than that. It's more than likely um, entities. If she's having any kind of experience, um, I mean, I don't know. I'm just making an assumption. But she met her special a spectral figure during a, a trip to Australia. There's some terrible puns in here. There she is, Amethyst Realm. One day I was walking through the bush, enjoying nature. I suddenly felt this incredible energy. I knew a new lover had arrived. Revealing details of a relationship, she said, although she can't see her ghostly lover, she is able to communicate with and have sex. And despite the fact she's not 100% uh, certain if they are male, the connection between the two was real. Amethyst said the ghost had returned to the UK with her, and six months after they met, they're still going strong. And she shared that she hoped she might be able to take things even further. Now, the thing about um, the ghost returning to the UK with her, depending on what you believe about the nature of ghosts, uh, that seems to indicate that it's not a ghost. Ghosts tend to be etheric recordings, that they, they stay in a specific area that they were associated with when they were al alive, or um, the area there they suffered a specific trauma, perhaps that killed them. They tend to kind of stay in that area. That's why you have haunted houses with people going through walls where doors used to be and all that kind of thing, um, which indicates this might be something else. Again, pure, all pure conjecture. This image here is to indicate a spirit. Looks like somebody pressing themselves up against a, a shower window or a curtain. So this is interesting. Um, we've been thinking about having a ghost baby. I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but I've been looking into it and I don't think it's totally out of the question. I don't know what authority you'd go to to get information on whether or not it's possible to have a, a, a ghost baby. Amethyst explains she has a particular theory that phantom pregnancies are actually ghost babies trapped in human bodies. She believes some women can get impregnated by spirits, but because the human body and mind cannot process it, the pregnancy uh, doesn't come to term. Or doesn't go to term. Uh, I'm sure there's a way around it, I just haven't worked it out yet, she said. Now, interestingly enough, there is some thinking on this, and in more traditional Arabic cultures, say around particularly Egypt, one of the, the lines of thought on this particular issue she's describing is actually you can get a material baby from a male spirit and a female human. That it would create a child that looks like a human being, but in fact is not a complete human being. It is a, a hybrid of human and jinn. So it's interesting enough that she refers to that. The other way around, where it's a male having uh, having sexual relationships with a female spirit, would uh, result in a spirit child. And um, that is the uh, belief in specifically areas of Cairo where belief in the jinn is quite strong. While her fiance was away, she decided to pursue things further. She said, and dressed in <laughs> dressed in saucy uh, negligee to entice the ghost, whom she says she went on to have sex with. It was kind of like a weight. I felt pressure on my thighs, and at the same time, uh, physical breath and stroking, she explained. Very similar, again, to, to what people have described in terms of experiencing um, encounters with entities. I am Amethyst's fiancé discovered she was cheating when the ghost apparently showed its physical form to him, something which she herself has never seen. Um, it's a bit of a shame they don't actually describe the physical form. That would be interesting. Uh, weirdly enough, this story came out in the press in August, but the photographs supporting it all seem to be coming from Christmas. You can see the uh, Christmas directions here behind Philip Schofield. 
looking incredulous. Anyway, she says her relationship with her first ghost lasted three years before eventually petering out. Since then, she's had 20 ghost lovers and is more embarrassed by her tally um, than the fact her partners don't take human form. Uh, Philip said, I should imagine you've got quite a name for yourself in the spirit world. I don't think you need to be embarrassed by your tally. This, this is the modern age. It's reasonable. So what do the scientists say? Christopher French, uh, professor of psychology at Goldsmiths College and co-author of Anomalistic Psychology, Exploring Paranormal Be Belief and Experience, says that ghostly experiences are not anything to do with mental illness. We need to avoid any kind of simplistic notion that anyone who's having a weird experience is suffering from a mental illness. What is generally accepted that hallucinatory experiences are much more common in the non-clinical, totally well-functioning part of the population than was once appreciated. Anyone can have hallucinations, uh, particularly if you are stressed or sleep uh, deprived. He believes the, uh, the cases of sex with ghosts can be explained easily. This catch-all term of ghosts is, is, is a bit annoying, really. Uh, sleep paralysis is common. 20 to 40 percent of people say they've experienced it, and the state between sleep and wakefulness when you realize you realize you can't move. Sleep paralysis is common. 20 uh, to 40 percent of people say they've experienced it, and is the state between sleep and wakefulness when you realize you can't move. In a smaller percentage of the population, you get associated symptoms that can be very serious. One is commonly reported uh, is a sense of presence something or someone in the room with you. You can also get hallucinations where you see dark shadows or monstrous figures. You get auditory hallucinations, you hear voices, footsteps, and also tactile hallucinations. They're probably not hallucinations. If you're in a weird state between sleep and wakefulness, sounds like an altered state where you're not fully um, conscious and you're not fully unconscious, that you're somewhere in between. Perhaps you are literally somewhere in between or you're seeing somewhere in between you're experiencing somewhere in between and um, the different forms of existence that exist somewhere in between whatever that might be that was there a couple of weeks ago comments are sensational as you can imagine but what was interesting there was another story that popped up today which prompted me to actually do a video about this uh, which is a woman whose boyfriend tragically died and she's claimed she's having sex with his ghost when he visits her at night so I think she was on a radio show and spoke about her long-term relationship uh, ending um, due to her boyfriend's death and saying there's a spirit visiting her and, uh, and having sex with her. Now, again, this is interesting as you would look at it from the, the prism of paranormal research. Entities will deceive people. You you often hear about people kind of engaging Ouija boards, being told outrageous lies all the time. Entities will appear as one's loved ones to get something from you. And I think what people are describing here uh, are, are essentially that kind of experience. Entities coming to her, coming to this lady, telling telling her that ex boyfriend in spirit form, and then being able to tap into um, human sexual energy. That's just a potential theory of what may be going on. Um, it just seems a little bit naive to think that this is all kind of just a wonderful thing and um, there's nothing being taken from individuals. Um, certainly energetically, there definitely is. And here's Amethyst again. And the, kind of the pylon here is she's turned her back on men to have sex with ghosts. Um, so what is, what is all of this? Well, it's actually got a scientific name, which is spectrophilia. Apparently Keisha is doing this as well. Um, wow, okay, hang on. So this one lady, uh, Shan Jemson, um, is a writer, artist, and spiritualist who says her paranormal lover began visiting her soon after she moved into a cottage in a remote part of Wales, England. She split up uh, from her boyfriend and was lonely. She insists the experience was not imaginary or stress-induced. She's very open about her experience and spoke candidly to the Daily Mail. Again, the Daily Mail? Robert was very handsome with beautiful hazel eyes and as we made love he stroked my body tenderly and I could feel the weight of him pressing down on me. Same thing. His body felt incredibly light. The whole encounter lasted for an hour and afterwards he whispered that was the most amazing thing I've ever experienced as we drifted off into sleep. So there's I guess physical and auditory uh, experiences here and it's quite interesting that there seems to be a discourse. Uh, Robert didn't stay with her long. After a few days of their initial encounter he told her he'd be leaving her she was distraught. Robert was not her last ghost lover. It's the same story, basically, somebody else. 
Um, this is the, the Lady Amethyst story again. Uh, this is just paraphrasing the Daily Mail article. Very interesting. <laughs> TV host slut shames woman who says she's had sex with 20 ghosts. In, yeah, in, in fairness here, get with the program, Philip. 20 lovers is not that much this day and age. But again, it seems to be slightly bypassing the issue. Right. Nothing really interesting on that. Anyway, um, Wikipedia article on spectrophilia. Spectrophilia as a fetish, classified as the paraphilia, in which one is attracted to ghosts or spirits. In Western folklore, the succubus or is a demon or evil spirit who takes on a female form to seduce men, and incubus the um, the counterpart. As you can see here, many cultures have, have folklore involving spirits having sexual relations with humans, including Arabic, Greek, Hindu, and Celtic culture. So this is a very old story. It's one that's been with us for time immemorial and will keep coming up. There's something going on in the human experience that lends us to think or feel or experience something in these inter-world states in between our living world and in between our dream world that we're accessing and experiencing um, whatever lives there or whatever... Um, whatever exists in that kind of vibrational spectrum. That's what I think is going on. It could be absolutely correct that it is entirely hallucinatory. Doesn't help when these articles come out, is it really stops any kind of really expanded and open exploration into this kind of phenomenon. Because really what you get when conventional materialist empirical science investigates these things, it's a foregone conclusion. It's going to be a hallucination. It always is. It's never really an honest exploration. I think that's sad because this is this is an old human experience. The stories come out again and again and again. Um, Amethyst could be entirely correct about what she's saying. She could be very, very honest. In that case, quite a brave woman to come forward and say what's happening to her, knowing that it, it's going to lead to her being lampooned to some degree. So I'm just, I hope you're very happy with your 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 ghost lover. And uh, that's it. It's odd that there's a cluster of these stories coming out at the same time. No idea why that might be. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with a more detailed lecture on Was Was, which is the Islamic idea of the whispering of demons. The exact same idea exists in Christianity called obsession. And I'll be exploring the symptoms of was was and what it potentially might mean and some of the unconventional science thinking around it. If you enjoyed this video, by all means give it a like and give it a subscribe. I'll leave links um, to these articles in the video notes. So give us a like and a subscribe and talk soon.